Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for this evening's virtual Public Information Center. My name is Lauren Fox, and I am the Ontario Marketing Lead at SEMA Plus, an engineering consulting firm. I will be moderating tonight, tonight's meeting, which will center around the Bridgeport Sewage Pumping Station upgrades located in Lincoln, Ontario. I would like to take a couple of minutes to explain how this evening's open house will run. We will begin with a presentation that outlines what the project is all about. The presentation will be posted to the project webpage a few days after this PIC is held. Following the presentation, a group of panelists involved in the project will be available to answer questions. Those of you who are joining us via Zoom, you can submit your questions at any time during or after the presentation by using the Q&A button feature found at the bottom of your screen. If you're joining us via teleconference, please email any questions to Mina Youssef or Cameron DiPietro. Their contact information can be found on the Niagara Region's project webpage. While we will, do, we will do our best to address as many of the questions as we can tonight, we may not be able to answer each individual question in detail. If we do not get to your question tonight, please contact us by phone or email. Niagara Region is new to virtual public meetings, and we would like to ask for your patience and understanding as we navigate this new format. While online platforms do not allow for quite the same face-to-face -face interaction, please know that we greatly value your feedback and questions and will make every effort to ensure your voice is heard. Also, please note that this meeting is being recorded and we will, sh will be shared on the Niagara Region website in the coming days. No personal information will be shared or displayed as part of this recording. Finally, today's meeting is being conducted via Zoom, which is a third-party video conferencing platform. If you have questions about using the software, we will do our best to answer them. However, we cannot troubleshoot individual technical problems. Again, if you are having challenges, know that the recording will be shared online following the meeting. During our meeting today, we will introduce the key members of the project team, present the Public Information Center materials, receive your questions, and address as many of the questions as we can tonight. The purpose of this Public Information Center is to introduce the Bridgeport Sewage Pumping Station Class Environmental Assessment Study to the public, to review the results of the activities completed to date and the preliminary preferred solution being recommended, and to present and receive public input on the information presented and stay informed and involved. We have several panelists from the project group who will be able to answer questions later in the evening with us. With us we have Cameron DiPietro, project manager from the Niagara region, Lindsay Jones, senior project manager from the Niagara region, Mina Youssef, senior project manager from SEMA Plus, and Sandra Rodriguez, Environmental Assessment Lead from SEMA Plus. I will now transfer control over to the Niagara Region's Project Manager, Manager Cameron DiPietro, to say a few words. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Lauren. Hello, everyone. My name is Cameron, and I am an engineer and project manager from the Niagara Region, specifically the Water and Wastewater Department for the Bridgeport Pumping Station Upgrades and Class Environmental Assessment. It is a pleasure to discuss with you all the details behind this project tonight. A bit of background on the project before we proceed with the presentation. Uh, the Bridgeport Sewage Pumping Station is a submersible pumping station with a single wet well and two submersible sewage pumps. This pumping station was identified for a capacity upgrade in the 2016 Water and Wastewater Master Servicing Plan update. Expected growth within the catchment area and the town of Lincoln triggered capacity improvements and upgrades at the station. In coordination with the town of Lincoln, Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Conservation and Parks, the objective of this capital project is to provide a complete detailed engineering design and construction for the upgrades to the Bridgeport pumping station. This includes supporting the planning, design and overall operation of the station. The Niagara region has retained the consulting services of SEMA to undertake the engineering design during the environmental assessment and design for the project. SEMA has a more than adequate and comprehensive team of experts to lead the environmental assessment and design. 
I look forward to addressing your comments and questions tonight and hope to see this project move forward successfully. Thank you, and I will now hand control back over to Lauren. Thank you, Cameron. I will now transfer control over to SEMA's project manager to also introduce himself and present the PIC material. Thank you, Lauren. Hello, everyone. My name is Mina Youssef. I'm an engineer and senior project manager in SEMA's water and wastewater group. SEMA is a multidisciplinary Canadian corporation that specializes in consulting engineering and project management for infrastructure, buildings, transportation, energy, and communication systems across Canada. SEMA was founded in 1990 and employs over 2,300 personnel. We have over 300 personnel in Ontario, 130 of who are water and wastewater engineers and specialists. As for me, I have over 15 years experience in water and wastewater and have been involved in several Niagara region projects over the past 10 years. I am the consultant project manager on this project. Thank you for joining us this evening, and I look forward to presenting the Public Information Center material. Tonight's presentation will provide an understanding of the municipal class environmental process, identify the problem opportunity statement, describe the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station and study area, summarize the alternative servicing solutions that have been identified and the screening process, identify the preliminary preferred solution selected through a detailed evaluation, describe the next steps and how you can get involved and finally answer your questions. Why are we here? Public consultation and engagement are vital to municipal class environmental assessment studies. The Public Information Center, also referred to as a PIC, is being held to inform the public on the municipal class environmental process that has been carried out for this project. We will review the results of the activities completed to date and the solutions being recommended, outline how you can provide feedback on the information presented, and stay informed and involved through the whole process. This presentation will describe the key activities, results, and recommendations being made by this class EA study. Comments, questions, or general feedback can be provided, provided via the question and answer feature on Zoom or by calling or emailing the project team members listed on the project website and at the end of this presentation. As mentioned earlier, this meeting is being recorded and will be shared on the Niagara Region website in the coming days to provide an opportunity for further comments, questions, or general feedback over the next two weeks. The purpose of this class EA study is to identify the preferred long-term servicing solution for the Bridgeport sewage pumping station catchment area that meets the existing needs and projected growth in the service area in, in the Jordan Village to 2041, as well as to recommend a preferred solution that minimizes impacts on the natural and social cultural environments and has regards to technical and financial implications. The Bridgeport SPS class environmental assessment study has been carried out as a Schedule B undertaking. The municipal class EA process for a Schedule B study incorporates the following successive phases. Phase one involves the identification of the problem opportunity statement and issuing a notice of commencement. A notice of commencement and PIC was issued in August of 2020 advising the start of the project and date of this PIC. Phase two involves an inventory of the study area as well as the development and evaluation of alternative wastewater servicing solutions, the identification of the recommended solution, and the hosting of a public information center. We are currently in the last stage of phase two where public consultation takes place to solicit feedback. Following confirmation of the preferred solution, a project file report will be prepared to document the decision-making process, findings, and recommendations of the study. This report will be made available for public review for a 30-day review period. A notice of completion will also be issued to notify that the project file report has been posted 
on the project website for public review. The notice of completion is planned to be issued by the fall of 2020. Following approval of the recommendations highlighted in the project file report, the project will proceed to the final implementation phase, which involves construction and operation of the Bridgeport sewage pumping station upgrades. The Bridgeport sewage pumping station services Jordan Station Village and the area slightly south of the village. The station conveys wastewater to the Baker Road wastewater treatment plant through a series of sewage pumping stations for ultimate treatment. It was originally constructed in 1979 and underwent upgrades in 2011. This pumping station is designed to have a firm rated capacity of 11.5 liters per second and is currently operating at or near its rated capacity. The figure on the right shows the site layout of the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station located at 4168 Bridgeport Drive in the town of Lincoln. This study has been planned with consideration of projected sewage flows resulting from anticipated growth in the Bridgeport sewage pumping station catchment area. The map on the right illustrates the catchment area for the Bridgeport sewage pumping station in which residence and employment growth is expected to occur. Based on the projected population and sanitary flows at build out in the catchment area, the rated capacity for the pumping station is recommended to increase from 11.5 11, apologies, from 11.5 liters per second to 25 liters per second. The problem opportunity statement for this class EA study has been defined as follows. Best planning estimates to 2041 indicate that significant growth will occur in the Bridgeport sewage pumping station catchment area. Additional wastewater servicing capacity is required to support the projected growth in the Bridgeport sewage pumping station catchment area to 2041. A preferred solution needs to be identified to meet future servicing requirements while minimizing impacts to the natural, social, cultural, and technical environments. A methodological evaluation process was used in the selection of a preferred capacity increase solution, which includes the following three steps. Step one, identify and screen alternative servicing solutions. Six potential alternative solutions were identified and screened based on the following must meet criteria. Compliance with capacity requirements is the first criteria. Second criteria is technical feasibility. Third criteria, economic feasibility. The alternatives that did not meet the preliminary screening criteria were eliminated. Step two, identify preliminary preferred solution through a detailed evaluation. After the preliminary screening, upgrade the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station was selected as the preferred alternative and was carried forward for further consideration. Within this selected alternative were three sub options. These implementation alternatives or sub options were assessed in de detail based on detailed evaluation criteria which will be shown in the next panel. The implementation alternative with the best overall score is recommended as the preliminary preferred solution for the Bridgeport sewage pumping station upgrades. Step three, the preferred solution will then be confirmed with input from the public and review agencies. Detailed evaluation criteria were developed and used in the assessment of the implementation alternatives. Four main categories of criteria were identified, social, cultural, environmental, technical and operational, and financial. The social cultural category considers public health and safety, construction impacts, public perception, aesthetic and operational impacts, land use and local property, and archeological and cultural heritage features. The environmental category considers the protection of source water, groundwater, 
streams, rivers, wildlife, natural habitats, and at-risk species, and environmental features and climate change. And the technical and operational category considers ease of construction and operation, meeting capacity requirements, construction duration, permits and approvals, and compatibility with existing utilities and services. Finally, the financial category considers the life cycle costs derived from the capital, installation, and operation and maintenance of the upgrades. The long list of Bridgeport SPS upgrade alternatives considered in step one of the selection process include alternative one, do nothing, alternative two, limit population growth in the area, alternative three, upgrade the existing sewage pumping station, alternative four, upgrade the existing sewage pumping station and construct a new sewage pumping station, alternative five, demolish the existing sewage pumping station and construct a new sewage pumping station on the existing site. Alternative six, demolish the existing sewage pumping station and construct a new sewage pumping station on a new site. The preliminary screening determined that alternative three, upgrade existing sewage pumping station as the preferred alternative. The other alternatives were eliminated from further consideration as they failed the must meet criteria. Preliminary screening identified alternative three, upgrade existing Bridgeport sewage station as the preferred alternative solution. Three potential implementation alternatives were further developed to complete the required upgrades at the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station. The first implementation alternative, alternative 3A, involves the expansion of the station to the south side with an extended fenced-in area. Alternative 3B also involves an expansion to the south side, but with a reduced fenced-in area. Finally, alternative 3C involves an expansion to the east side with an extended fenced-in area. Conce conceptual layouts for the three implementation alternatives or sub-options are presented in the next panels. Alternative 3A. Alternative 3A involves major upgrades to the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station and expanding the station on the south side in order to meet the projected flows. Land acquisition would not be required for the installation of additional infrastructure for this alternative as expanding the sewage pumping station on this site will be within the municipal road right-of-way. The key components of this alternative are extending the wet well and valve chamber to the south, relocating the standby generator to the west side of the station, inlet work upgrades, extending the fenced-in area on the south, west, and east side of the site. Alternative 3B. Alternative 3B involves the relocation of the standby generator from the west side to the east side of the site. Land acquisition from the adjacent property would be required for this relocation to occur. The key components of this alternative are lowering the wet well ceiling slab below grade and asphalt. This will allow the town to maintain available space for street parking on Bridgeport Drive, providing a chimney for access hatches, inlet work upgrades, extending the fenced-in area on the east side only. Alternative 3C. Alternative 3C would involve major upgrades to the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station to expand the station to the east side to meet projected flows. The sewage pumping station will extend beyond the limits of the existing road right-of-way onto a private property behind the barn on Prince William Street in Jordan. Should this location be the preferred option, land acquisition would be required. The key components of this alternative involve extending the wet well and valve chamber to the east, relocating the standby generator to the east side of the station, increasing shoring requirements in order to protect the barn and bank, 
inlet work upgrades would not be required, extending the fenced in area on the east and north side of the site. The three shortlisted alternatives were further evaluated on a comparative basis based on a set of specific considerations within the social, cultural, natural environment, technical and operational and financial criteria. The slide, show, the slide shows the detailed evaluation results of the shortlisted alternatives considered for the Bridgeport sewage pumping station upgrades. The total score achieved by each alternative is shown here. A fuller circle represents the most preferred option and a 25% filled circle represents the least preferred option. The detailed evaluation results showed that alternative 3C achieved the highest score of a 75% filled circle. This alternative presents the lowest noise, odor, traffic, and aesthetic impacts as well as the lowest life cycle cost. Alternative 3C obtained the highest total score indicated, indicating that this alternative would provide the greatest benefit to the region compared to the other alternatives. This alternative involves the upgrade of the existing sewage pumping station and expansion to the east side with an extended fenced in area. The alternative has been identified as the preliminary preferred solution for the Bridgeport sewage pumping station upgrades as it offers the following key advantages. Reduces visual impacts of the Bridgeport sewage pumping station by expanding the station behind the adjacent barn. Reduces impacts during construction by avoiding inlet work upgrades in the existing road right of way. Reduces noise impacts by moving the standby generator further away from the closest receptor. Shortest construction duration as compared to the other two alternatives. This alternative has lower construction risks and dis disruptions due to less bypass pumping while providing largest working area for operation and maintenance staff that is fully fenced. Finally, this option has the lowest capital and life cycle cost. As with any construction project, the region recognizes that there will be impacts to the environment as a result of the proposed work. The following are mitigation measures. For natural environment, in an effort to mitigate the environmental impacts associated with the project, the replanting and reseeding of vegetation will occur in the areas adjacent to the pumping station site post-construction. Avoid removal of vegetation during the activity, during the active season for bird breeding birds, which is between April 15 and August 15, as well as additional consultation with conservation authorities will continue to ensure the protection of sensitive natural environmental features. For social environment, health and safety are a priority to the region. All construction will adhere to strict safety guidelines. Temporary measures will be undertaken during construction in order to minimize noise, dust, mud, and visual impacts. A traffic control plan will also be prepared to mitigate any potential traffic disturbance during construction. As well, the generator will be contained in a weatherproof, sound attenuated enclosure designed to meet noise limits defined by the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks. In order to minimize noise and vibration impacts during construction, impacts will be limited to the land behind the barn. Furthermore, the existing pumping station will remain in operation during construction, so minimal bypass pumping will be required. In order to protect archaeological resources, further archaeological investigation will be carried out to confirm specific mitigation measures. Technical mitigation considerations. During construction, additional infrastructure will be constructed offline to minimize the complexity of the construction and maximize the ability to maintain adequate sewage pumping services during construction. The wet well will be properly designed to ensure no surcharging or overflow in the inlet sewer at future flows and to protect groundwater quality. Additionally, 
the use of energy efficient equipment and the installation of a standby power system will support the station's ability to adapt to climate change impacts. The conceptual site plan proposed expanding the wet well and constructing a new precast valve chamber and replacing the existing standby generator with a new one. A visual representation of the site plan is depicted by the figure on the right. This plan requires land acquisition from a private owner who is willing to sell the land to accommodate the additional infrastructure. As well, it requires permission to enter agreement between the region and the private property owner to allow access. The region has initiated the process of purchasing land from the local landowner to the east of the existing station. However, is still doing their due diligence in respect to the environmental assessment process. The following is anticipated project timeline for the Class A study and implementation of the preferred sanitary servicing solution. Completion of the planning component of the project or the environmental assessment process is anticipated in the fall of 2020. Completion of the design and approval stage is also anticipated in the fall of 2020. Finally, construction is anticipated to start in early 2020 and will be completed by early 2021. After tonight's PIC, the next steps for the project team will be to review and consider the public input received during and after the PIC, confirm the preferred recommended solution to upgrade the existing Bridgeport sewage pumping station, prepare the project file report, issue a notice of study completion, file the project file report on the public record for public review. We encourage you to stay involved and review all PIC material available on our website. Please submit any comments or questions that you may have by email or phone as listed on the slide before October 2nd, 2020. Thank you. And I will now hand control back to Lauren Fox. Thank you, Mina. Um, we have received a few questions so far. And just a reminder, to submit a question, please click on the Q&A icon found at the bottom of your screen and type in your question. Our first question here, uh, sorry, just a second. Um, it's when can we residents of Jordan Station expect the pumping station upgrades to be completed? I think I will hand this one over to Cameron. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so thank you for the question. So we anticipate the Schedule B Class E A process to take us until November of 2020. Um, pending design completion, approvals, and tendering, we are planning on beginning construction to the station early of 2021. And construction is anticipated to be completed by the fall of 2021. Um, just a note, the town was unable to join us this evening, but we received um, some essential feedback from them on a few items related to the town's projects that are coming up. So if there are any questions for the town, uh, feel free to ask them here. If we can't answer them during this PIC, we will forward the, uh, any questions to them. Okay, thank you. Our second question is uh, somewhat related to the first um, in asking, and in reference to the flooding many residents in Jordan Station dealt with a few years ago. Um, yes, so to, to address this uh, question, um, the upgrade that's being currently done for the Bridgeport Sewage Pumping Station is not to address basement flooding. The project is to accommodate growth to the area based on the wastewater master servicing plan. The pumping station is intended for sanitary sewage flows only. The station is not intended to pump inflow and infiltration from downspouts and some pumps and foundations. Residents in the area have been great at voluntarily disconnecting a number of downspouts. The town is working 
with the consultant GM Blueprint to work with residents to identify connected sump pumps and foundation drains. A proposed disconnection plan program will be brought to council in the next six months for approval and public information center will be held with the finalized plan and program. Thank you. Sorry, I was having a technical difficulty there. Um, our next question here, um, I think this one will be for Mina as well. Is, uh, is the new standby generator quieter than the existing one or louder? And what is the decibel rating as compared to the existing? The, the new standby uh, generator, natural gas generator uh, will be, will have a sound attenuated enclosure that will meet the Ministry of Environment Con and Conservation Parks uh, guidelines for noise. Uh, it, uh, in, in terms of specifically, is it going to be louder than the existing or quieter? Uh, we'll have to look at what the existing decibels are for the existing uh, generator before we can answer that question. And uh, in terms of what, what the new decibels are, we'll, we'll provide a response for that later. Thank you, Mina. Um, one more question here. I think this one is for Cameron. Will a mock-up of the site be available illustrating different viewpoints? All right, thank you, Lauren. So thanks for the question. Um, we will take this into account. I don't think we've actually set up a mock-up of the site, but we will take that into account and um, do our best to illustrate the different viewpoints. So thanks for the question, but we will get back to you on that. Okay, just reading through a couple more questions here. Um, we have a question here. Have local residents been involved in the upgrades design process thus far? I think this one is for Mina. Thanks, Lauren. The project group met with local residents back in February of 2020 to receive input on the original design that had the station originally being expanded in the existing road uh, right-of-way. Uh, as a result of this meeting and discussion with the local landowners, the new proposed upgrades have been implemented to accommodate uh, the concerns raised by the residents during that meeting. Apologies there. I've got several screens happening all at once here. Okay, our next question. Um, here we are. When is the Phelps development and construction starting? This will be for uh, the region. Okay, thank you, Lauren. I'll answer that. So the timing for the pumping station constructed, as we said, is planned for completion in um, the fall of 2021. The Phelps development is not permitted to start until after the pumping station capacity has been increased. So once construction of the pumping station has been completed, then the development uh, construction will begin. Perfect. Okay. And what kind of perimeter fencing will be installed around the station? I think this might be for Mina. Uh, we're looking at... Uh installing aluminum uh, composite fencing around the station to reduce the visual impact of the new station, uh, a color that's compatible with the surrounding, for instance, the unpainted cladding on the adjacent barn will be selected 
for the fencing. Okay, thank you. I've got a few more here. Um, where will the existing fire hydrant on the road be relocated and, and why move it? I can answer that one, Lauren. The existing fire hydrant will be relocated towards the south of the road, uh, close to the intersection of Bridgeport Drive and Prince William Street. The town routinely uses the fire hydrant to flush the water line servicing, servicing the homes along Bridgeport Drive. If the fire hydrant is located near the intersection of Bridgeport Drive and Prince William Street, then the town would not be able to flush the water line portion servicing the homes north of the intersection. Locating the fire hydrant near the end of the cul-de-sac next to the barn is preferred to ensure the entire water line is flushed. Okay, and we have another one here for you, Mina. Can the entire pumping station be removed from this area and located somewhere else? This option was considered uh, as part of the EA uh, and we can uh, refer to the uh, evaluation of alternatives under step one and was not considered uh, a viable option. Uh, there's uh, no, nothing viable in the area for significant land acquisition uh, or to move sanitary main and does not maximize the use of existing uh, sewage infrastructure. Thank you. Um, another question here for, um, for Mina again. Will my home receive water and wastewater servicing? If, uh, if, currently con if you're con currently connected to, to services, uh, you'll continue receiving such services. Um, the, the Bridgeport Sewage Pumping Station Class Environmental Assessment uh, focuses on the expansion of the pumping station. Thank you. Um, we have a question here for the region, I believe. When is the Bridgeport Queen Victoria Red Maple being upgraded? Okay, thank you, Lauren. Um, so the reconstruction of Red Maple and area roads will not be constructed, constructed until the Phelps project is completed. Um, the town has informed us that this will probably be around 2023 or later. Um, the town does not want to have ongoing construction for years in the area, and also they don't want to damage newly constructed road works, especially around the, uh, the pumping station. Um, the town has told us um, that they are intending to construct the mainline storm sewer in advance to help facilitate the development, development needs. However, timing is unknown, but could begin as early as Q1 of 2021. So. January through March. Um, the final design is not 100% completed and the town is working with Phelps on a cost sharing agreement. This should be all finalized by mid-October. Thank you. Um, I have another question here for Mina. If the fire hydrant is moved near the barn, will this alter parking capacity? This shouldn't affect the current parking uh, capacity on the road uh, other than we're, I believe we're relocating the fire hydrant uh, a few meters uh, down south. Uh, so it, it just reduced the parking by that many uh, meters uh, on Bridgeport Drive. Again, we, we did look at locating the fire hydrant closer to the intersection of Bridgeport Drive and uh, Prince William, uh, but the concern was uh, the homes along, uh, the, the town routinely flood, uses the, f the fire hydrant to flush the water service line that's servicing the homes along Bridgeport Drive. And if the fire hydrant is located uh, near the intersection, then the, the houses north of the intersection uh, the town would not be able to flush 
the water service uh, line servicing those homes. So the ideal location for the fire hydrant is to have it at the end of Bridgeport Drive so that when the town flushes uh, the service line, it flushes the entire line. Okay, thank you, Mina. Um, I have a question here for Cameron again. With the addition of the extra 11 and a half liters per second pumping capability, would it handle the new construction and take care of the existing problem of sewage backup in existing homes? Okay, thank you, Lauren. Um, yes, so with the additional, well, we're up to 25 uh, liters per second, I believe. So we're increasing by 13 and a half liters a second. So yes, it will be able to handle the um, existing or sorry, the new construction from Phelps Development. As far as the sewage backup in the existing homes, Mina touched upon this earlier. The upgrade for the station isn't to address the basement flooding, it's just based to accommodate the growth of the, um, of the area based on the water wastewater master service plan. Um, as Mina mentioned, the pumping station is intended for sanitary sewage flows only. Okay, thank you. Um, I have another question for Cameron here. Can the town install fencing along the CN tracks? Thanks, Lauren. So we have had a few inquiries come from uh, members of the public on this. Um, unfortunately, that is CN property and it is outside of the town's and region's jurisdiction. Um, if there are concerns with trespassing along that section, uh, the town recommends calling CN police. Um, their number I can get it for you just a second. It's 1-800-465-9239. And of course, if you're receiving any threats or physical harm from the trespassers, if there are any, please call 911 immediately. All right, thank you. And uh, it looks like those are all the questions we have for tonight. Um, once again, thank you everyone for joining tonight's Public Information Center. And as we stated earlier, we greatly value your input and feedback. And if you would like to provide further feedback or contact anyone on the project team with additional questions, the key contacts are provided on this slide and on the top of the project webpage. Please feel free to reach out and to contact us with any questions or concerns. On behalf of myself and all of our panelists, I would like to thank you all for taking the time to engage with us and have a good rest of your evening.